So this last week, I had the great privilege of going on a backpacking trip with a couple of friends of mine. And as this isn't something I usually do, I thought it would be a great opportunity to put this bag through its paces. This right here is a bag by Naya Evo. It's called the Ford 60C, and it's a 60 liter bag, obviously. It isn't really made to be an overnight backpacking bag. Instead, it's more for adventure photography and things like that. It's really geared up great for that, and there are some excellent photo and video related did reviews on YouTube uh, talking about why this bag is excellent for that. And that was really the reason I bought it. So I could carry my big camera, my big lens, and a whole bunch of other stuff for the children out on day hikes with them when I want to do some serious photography. Being not really big into backpacking, I didn't want to go out and buy a second bag. So I thought, hey, why not put this bag through the paces, see how it works on a four day, three night trip, and let you all know how it went. There are more bugs and mosquitoes out here right now than there were out on our entire trip, which is kind of impressive and terrible about where we live. I am going to dive into a breakdown of all the pockets and straps and accessories and things that come with this bag that make it a great bag. Uh, but before then, let's just unload everything and see what I was able to fit in here for my trip. First up on the outside, I clipped a couple of carabiners that allowed me to attach my bedrock sandals on there that I was gonna use as camp shoes. I was briefly considering hiking in these, but as we were going through some stinging nettle, I thought it'd be better not to do that. Underneath those in this netted strapping area, I have my sleeping pad all in a dry bag. The only other things I stored on the outside were two liters of water, one in each of the pockets on either side. Now there are four main pockets. Now the first of those is this eight liter dry bag up top, which opens up as well as allows you to fold down and cinch it tight. In here, I included things I wanted quick access to or protection from heavy rain. So first of those was another dry bag that I included a thin layer in for some quick warmth, as well as padding for my Leica, which is the camera I took with me on the trip. Besides that, I also included some granola bars or quick snacks throughout the day, but that's about all that I included in this dry bag. I could have fit a whole lot more in there if I had need to. In the front pocket here, I can include my tent. Now, this isn't the tent I took with me. Uh, instead, we all shared a tent, so I just included some components of the tent up front, but this simulates that. I also had my water filtration kit in another dry bag, not to keep it dry, but to keep my bag dry after running some water through the filter. I also included a contractor bag to wrap my bag in at night in case we got a really heavy downpour. And slipped inside the contractor bag, there is this little shovel for, you know, digging some cat holes in the woods. Which reminds me that in this bag simulation I put together right now, I don't have any toilet paper or soap, which I did take with me, but I did not take enough toilet paper. So that is a personal note for next time. More toilet paper. Don't skimp on the toilet paper. Then of course there is this little lightweight packable towel uh, for quickly drying up after getting cleaned up at night in the local streams. That was all I included in that pouch. So let's go to the top access. In here is where I included most everything else. Uh, first of all, there was a rain jacket in case it rained. It didn't, but I still took it just in case. I had another dry bag with a heavier sweater in it that also doubled as a pillow for night. A mini first aid kit to accompany the larger one carried by a friend. The rain cover that came with the backpack itself. A spare set of clothes as well as shorts to wear in the evening. My food bag, compact cook kit, and yes, of course, because it's me, I did take stuff to make coffee, and that was my AeroPress Go. I did consider taking along a new portable espresso maker that I had, but you know, I figured for this trip, I'd just go the easy route for cleanup. If you are interested in that portable espresso maker, check out my video from last week, which is linked up here. Then, of course, the ever useful paracord for hanging bear bags and things like that. And then the final pouch in the back is my sleeping bag down at the bottom, plus a couple little dry pouches here, which served as my electronic gear carry section. And so that are things like an extra battery to recharge my phone, Apple Watch, which I was wearing during the trip, as well as the cables to do the charging. And so this is it. This is all the gear that I managed to fit in this bag and carry with me on a four day, three night trip. All this together totaled in about 35 pounds. On the first day, I also added an extra 12-ish pounds of water to this bag in a water bladder that we were carrying to the campsite where we wouldn't have water that evening. Before diving into the bag itself and talking about all the features that it comes with, I want you to keep in mind that this bag was designed as a photographer's slash videographer's adventure bag. And so yes, it is missing many of the features and conveniences that are found on modern backpacking backpacks. It wasn't designed with that as its primary purpose in mind. But like I said, I had this, I didn't want to spend the extra money on another backpack. I wanted to see how it would do. And frankly, as someone who hasn't backpacked in a really long time and doesn't plan on doing it that often, I think it performed stellar. Would I take this on an extremely long multi-week hike? No, probably not. I'd end up going for something that's a little bit more ultralight or designed for that purpose. Anyway, let's get back to the bag itself. 
As you saw at the beginning, there is this detachable netting that you can remove for streamlinability if you want, or attach it if you want to keep things stored on the exterior of your bag, as I did for my sleeping pad. That detachable netting system attaches to these fabric loops at the top and bottom, which other straps pass through to cinch down the bag to make it a bit tighter, as well as to hold taller standing items such as tripods or trekking poles on the side. They're also sturdy enough if you want to attach some carabiners to them and tug around, say, you know, 12 pounds of water. On the bottom bag, you have extra loops, which you can use for other attachment points. And after a bit of experimentation, this is where I move that water bladder to. Let's jump around to the side and talk about the pockets. These are actually the things that I dislike about the bag the most. I chose to take two one liter smart water bottles with me. They're thin and lightweight and can usually fit into any pocket with ease. And these are also what I choose to get when traveling to major cities. Uh, and when there's nothing in the bag, they do slide in there just perfectly. However, when the bag is full, these pockets become really tight. And honestly, I thought there should be a little bit more given plane to them. I don't think you can find a water bottle that is thinner than this. And even these were pretty hard to sneak on in there. The other major inconvenience with these pockets is this lower strap to cinch the bag tighter to make it a little bit more compact. Go right over the lower portion of the pocket. And yes, I guess, sure. In theory, it helps to cinch down whatever you have in there. When it comes to water bottles though, you wanna be able to get those in and out pretty easily without any constraint. And frankly, they're only about one to two inches up from the bottom of the bag. I would have much preferred those to go through the inside of the pocket here instead of on the outside. Going around to the back, we can see the shoulder straps as well as the waist belt. Now this waist belt is removable, though it is a bit of a pain to do. There is a large Velcro pad in here that you have to first unvelcro before you can pull it out. The nice thing about this hip belt is it is really well padded and thick, and I found it very comfortable to use in practice. One thing I don't like about it is that there are no compartments for quickly storing things for ease of access while out on the hike. However, they are covered with this one inch of nylon webbing material, which frankly makes a lot more sense to me. I just wish I had thought about that before getting out on the trail. It also means it's a great location to attach Peak Design's capture clip, which allows me to quickly and easily add my Leica camera to the capture clip and then just pull away so it's always at my hip when I needed it. Now I didn't think about that before the trip so I didn't actually take the camera clip with me but next year I definitely will. Let's look at the shoulder straps themselves. They also have a lot of padding on them as well as plenty of loops and webbing material to allow you to attach other things to them like I said. The sternum strap also includes a built-in whistle for emergency purposes. <laughs> so it's just an extra thing you don't need to take with you. Now let's look at the rear pocket. Many backpacks designed for hiking and backpacking don't have a rear access compartment. The reason the Naya Evo does is because it is designed for photographers and you want to be able to open up and have quick access to all of your gear out on the trail. Honestly, I would prefer that my backpacking bag didn't have this built in, but it really wasn't that much of a hassle to get around while out on the trail. Uh, but if you open this up, you will see that there's a top shelf portion as well as a lower area. That lower area is where I kept my sleeping bag. When I take this out with the family for photography purposes, this packs up and I have a nice camera cube that fits in here. And the camera cube is the real reason I went with this bag because it is a wonderful deep camera cube that fits my Nikon Z9 as well as the 100 to 400 lens attached to it. And I don't have any other bag or camera cube which can do that. On the inside of that flap, you have these two dry zipper bags, which is a great location to store things like batteries or cables, things that you really wanna keep dry, but don't need immediate access to. The other way to access the main compartment is through the top, and that gives you access to that pouch area that we saw before. And this is where I kept everything else, as you saw earlier, my food bag, my cook kit, my extra clothing, everything all jammed right in here. It also has a web zipper compartment at the top, which is where I now keep my paracord. At the top is that eight liter dry bag that we talked about earlier, and it is just a well reinforced bag to keep things dry as well as to be easy access if you need it. It has a zipper compartment, and if you don't use it, it just folds down flat, and there is a buckle at the su each side, which allows you to really cinch it down. Or even if you do have something inside of there, you can pull this down to keep it as streamlined as possible. Now earlier, you sh saw that quick access pouch on the front, which is where I kept things like my pocket knife and other various accessories. Then the final pocket is this front pocket right here. Nothing on the open flap, but inside you have this padded laptop compartment. 
And yes, once again, it is designed as a laptop compartment because this is a photographer's bag. It's not really made for backpacking. No, I did not take my MacBook Air out with me on the trail. Otherwise, we have another zippered dry pocket underneath with little sub pockets in it for a guidebook or a Kindle or anything like that. <laughs> As far as the bag itself is made of a really high quality nylon ripstop material. It also uses fantastic YKK zippers and aluminum poles. And I didn't use it on this trip, but there is a pass through right here so that you can include a water bladder on the side and have the tubing come out on your right hand side. Because of the inconvenience I had this trip quickly accessing water bottles, that is something I'm going to consider for next year, but I really don't like water bottles. They just, you know, always have the possibility of leaking as well as it's just taking up extra room on the inside of your bag. But hey, we'll see about that. Finally, in addition to all the straps and the webbing material to add some extra storage on the outside, the bag does also come with its own rain protection. We had beautiful weather on the trip, so I didn't really have any need to put this to use. But it's really well made and just slips over the bag and will hopefully keep it dry while you're out in a downpour. At this point, my only real complaint about the bag is the side pockets. I just wish they had a little bit more give to them so you could open them a bit wider with a cinch on the side to tighten them down if needed. It's just, they feel really tight to the bag. And if I had trouble just putting a smart water bottle in there, it seems like, yeah, they definitely should be a little bit bigger. Because of the difficulty, I'm thinking about how I'm going to do my water situation next year, either switching to the water bladder or maybe attaching a netting on the hip pouch and bringing a water bottle up front so I can quickly access it while out on the hike. The only other real issue that I have with the bag from a backpacking perspective is that it is heavier than I would like. I personally would prefer to go with a really ultralight bag weighing in like two or two and a half pounds. This bag comes in just shy of five and a half pounds, but it does have an internal frame built into it. And frankly, it is really comfortable to carry with the 35 to 50 pounds of weight that I was carrying for those four days. The only other complaint I had while out on the trail was with this waist belt. And that is simply because there weren't pockets on it. That is not something that I've needed in the past while using it for photography, but it is something that would have been handy for the sustained hike. And if I had thought about it beforehand, it would have been a solvable problem by just getting a couple of small pouches that I like and attaching them to the nylon webbing here. So my overall rating is yes, it makes a very decent backpacking bag. No, it's not designed for that, but it works really well and it makes an exceptional photography bag for a day out on the trail with your family. About a week before I went out on the trail, Nio Evo released a Kickstarter for a new version of this bag. And frankly, I am a bit confused because I'm not exactly sure what's different about the new bag. From what I'm gathering, they are using a more economically responsible nylon fabric, which, okay, good on them. But beyond that, the new bag removes the zippered compartment on the outside flap right here. And it also features a removable waist belt. And so I really don't know what I have. If this is a version 1.5 of the bag that uses the old fabric and then the newer bags coming out in November will have the new fabric plus all these changes, I, I really don't know. But let me tell you that I do love this bag. And if you are interested in getting the bag at reduced cost, definitely go check out their Kickstarter, which I've linked down below. Now, besides this 60 liter bag, they also have a 26 and 36 liter version. I personally also own the 26 liter, which I use as a quick lightweight photo bag. But I'm also thinking about picking up the 36 liter to accompany it from the new Kickstarter. This sort of review is not my usual fare for this channel, but I've had an incredibly busy summer and I just wanted to get out and talk about something that I used recently and just have a good time in front of the camera, which I definitely did. Usually I talk more about productivity and tech and family life, but I am just trying to get back into a regular routine of releasing these weekly videos. And so I hope you like this. Till next time, bye. There is a large Velcro pad in here that you have to first unvelcro before you can before you can pull it out. One on each side in the pockets. The first of them is this top one here, which is now the first of the, now the first of those I is now the first of those is this eight li hmm. Please let me know if you can hear all these trucks. I am really curious. I'm I'm talking to Marco. <laughs> Besides that, hello. 
Besi besides that, I also include... Yes? Yolanda's in there just looking at me. Yes, I'm talking about you on camera. Hi! At the bottom bag, you also have some similar attachment points, which is where I ended up moot. That's not funny. You, you missed the chicken on camera. Why are you throwing chickens at me? Yolanda's throwing chickens at me. <laughs>